Hey, what's happening gamers? It's Luke from GameZone, and do I have another impressions video for you. This time we're taking an in-depth look at Final Fight Double Impact, which is a downloadable game on the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live, and will cost you roughly 10 bucks. But man, is it ever worth it. I would have paid for it all over again, just like I got it off the Wii's Virtual Console a few years back, because I really like the Final Fight series. Still, if you want to see my review of that game, be my guest. It's rather old, but it's still pretty good, and the most watched Final Fight review on YouTube. But, in all honesty, the reason why I wanted to do an impressions video of this package is because of Magic Sword. This game was one of my most played imported Super Famicom games, and I was this close to owning this arcade cabinet when I lived in Illinois. I'm so happy that it re-released with this collection. Since I've done Final Fight previously, I'm going to spend a lot more time with Magic Sword. Magic Sword Heroic Fantasy released in July of 1990 in the arcades and saw a Super Nintendo port in 1992, although the game is only one player and was a very rare US SNES game. Now, after years of thinking I would never play this game again, here it is as part of this collection! Although it did appear as part of the Capcom's classic Volume 2, but you get my point. The plot of the game has to do with an evil warlord in control of an evil crystal known to one and all as the Black Orb. A lone hero called the Brave One emerges from the chaos and swears to destroy the Vile Lord and save the world. So, you can see it's really no different plot-wise to Golden Axe or Gauntlet, but that's not really a bad thing. The whole point of the game is to scale the 50-story tower called the Dragon's Keep. But there's a twist, gamers. At the end of the game, you get a choice to either save the world... ...or become the new Lord of Darkness yourself. Now, the actual gameplay combines side-scrolling beat-em-up action with some platforming elements. Gamers control only the main character and can have one of eight heroes to journey with you. Keep in mind, all of the freed allies are controlled by the computer, though. After beating one of the eight bosses, the hero was rewarded with a new sword. Hence the name of the game, folks. Magic Sword. Though, be careful, because as soon as you're hit, the hero will drop his sword. So be sure to pick it back up, or it's gone for good. And trust me, that's not a good thing. Players can acquire items from treasure chests, too, and some of these items increase your score, whereas others only work for that floor. Like many fantasy games, players can use magic. Magic can be used one of two ways in this game. The Brave One can release magic from his sword after it's charged up, and you can also pick up different potions similar to Golden Axe. To use the magic, what you do is you press the jump and the attack button at the same time, and you get a powerful magical attack. Rescuing other heroes is another important feature in this game, and you do this by finding different keys. The stronger your character becomes over the course of the game means that your ally will gain levels too. Magic Sword can be played with two people either locally or online. Now what you've all been waiting for, my thoughts on the game. I love Magic Sword just as much as I enjoyed it as a kid. This game is exciting and frantic all at the same time. Bad guys will respawn faster than you can kill them, so the object of the game is to find the next doorway out of there, otherwise you could be stuck fighting forever. But still, it's so much fun. Probably the reason I have such a fondness of this game is the fact the Brave One looks a lot like He-Man, with exception that he has a blonde ponytail, of course. This game combines all the fantasy elements that I'm a sucker for, and I can't think of many games that upgrade your weapons after defeating bosses. I know that Capcom's Knights of the Round had your heroes level up somehow during the game, but I always liked the way Magic Sword did it best. There was just something about knowing that you could lose your powers if you were hit by a bad guy. It just added another dimension to the gameplay for me. I really enjoyed the eight different assist characters from the big guy, the Amazon, the priest, the thief, the wizard, the ninja. 
the Lizard Man, and of course, the most powerful of them all, the Holy Knight. Being able to rescue these guys and interchange them was a really cool feature. Since I really didn't get to enjoy the co-op feature of this game as a kid since the Super Nintendo Kart was only one player, I can definitely say that it made the game a lot more fun. There's just something about playing this game with a friend sitting next to you or having a blast with a buddy online. It makes no difference and the co-op just makes this game even better, if that's even possible. Alrighty folks, let's tackle Final Fight and then talk about the different features that are in this collection. Like I said before, I already went into depth with this game for my K-Wing review series a few years back, so I'm mainly going to be talking about the changes that this game has. The most obvious thing everyone is going to notice is Guy is in this game! Another reason to relieve me of my hard-earned cash, Capcom, Guy is one of my favorite Final Fight and Alpha characters too. He's just such an awesome character, I mean, look at the guy, he's like a ninja with sneakers. That's awesome! The enemies are not censored in this game, so Poison makes a return to the franchise, and for those of you still playing Final Fight on your Wii's, yes, there is a girl in this game. Also, all the other characters' names are completely unchanged, unlike the Super Nintendo version. The game's music is the arcade original, and the tunes sound pretty epic if you ask me. Still, the biggest difference with this game is not only are all three characters playable, but the game can also be played co-op online or locally, a feature sorely missing from so many ports of this game. So grab a friend and bash in some punks together, it's so much fun. Final Fight Double Impact features some new goodies. For one, the game can be played in a traditional arcade cabinet with scan lines and all. You could play it in smooth SNES inspired graphics with a 4-3 screen, or the game could be played in full widescreen. Since this is literally an arcade port, both games use unlimited quarters, so you can play as long as you want to without ever needing to worry about running out of lives. Yes! Both games feature achievements and have certain goals that need to be met, but your reward is unlocking either artwork or some other stuff. Oh, I can't wait to take him on! Well, Ken, looks like there's about to be an opening in his dance card. <laughs> yeah. That looked like a wussy punch to you. Eh, I could still kick his bush kick. Personally, I hope this isn't the last we've seen of this type of downloadable games, because arcade games still kick a lot of butt. I guarantee that old and new fans alike will have an amazing time playing these classic games, either solo or with a friend. Well, that does it for me. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Keep it locked here for new content from GameZone all the time. And don't forget to hit up our home site for amazing content you won't find anywhere else. This has been Luke from GameZone. My catchphrase, as always, is God bless and happy gaming. And until we meet again, gamers.